Hey guys, Joe from SimVR Labs here, and as promised, it's time to get into the IMG UI menus. IMG UI is a thing that's been uh, kind of uh, integrated into Fly with Lua, where uh, you can make uh, menus that are scalable and, and resizable, and you can put buttons and stuff on them, and compatible with VR, which is awesome. So, uh, let's get right to it. So I've made a template, right? So uh, Foco, actually, uh, if you know Foco from the org, uh, he's the dude that created Abitab and uh, and uh, Move VR, and uh, he also is is the one that created this uh, demo script, right? So it's an IMG UI demo script, and basically, uh, see all these awesome comments and stuff. He basically describes everything of what everything is, like he's. He makes it really easy, so you can use this demo script. It's actually in your Fly with Lua uh, disabled scripts folder. You can you can drop it over into scripts, and you can drop over. There's another f uh, file that goes with it. Otherwise, you'll get an error. The other file that goes with it is a is an image called IMGUI demo. I think it's .jpg. Uh, you drop both of those into your scripts, and then you can see um, the demo. Uh, now uh, I'm pulling up the demo script now, and uh, you can see he's got all these things. He's got pull-down menus. He's showing that you can do different text. You can push this button. It changes that text color. Um, you can click and hold it, and it blinks the text colors. Um, you can do these kind of choice things, check boxes, uh, sliders, you know, all kinds of things, right? Uh, so, um, basically, I took his demo script and what you would do is is normally you would take and, and piece this together by copy and pasting different things and then doing different things what i've done is i've made a template all right this is a blank template um and essentially all you have to do is come in here use the template and uh do a search and replace for the words uh my program so my program is kind of everywhere everything's my program this my program that that's just a generic thing that you want to change your uh you want to you want to change it to make it say whatever you want it to say based on what you want to call your menu right when you do that you do a search and replace for my program replace it with whatever you want so for example down here i've got c172 menu to my program that's backwards so i'm going to cut put uh my program and we'll call it C172 menu, which I've already got filled out here. Um, now, the reason it's not just 172 menu is because in Lua, you can't start a variable with a number. Okay? One thing I forgot to mention in my previous videos, if you do that, it's going to be an error, right? So, um, C, you want to start with a letter. So, C172 menu. And um, if I actually change this, so... I don't want to change it. I'll tell you why. Because this is my template, right? I don't want to change my template, so I actually want to create a new file, right? And we'll we'll name it when we save it. But I'm just gonna basically select all. Let me select all. Fine. I'll just do this, right? I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna paste this dude. And then I'm going to close this because I don't want to change the template, right? I want that template to always be the same. And I'm going to say, no, I don't want to save the changes, right? So now I've got my template. And now I can put my cursor up there so that it goes that way. Make sure my direction is going down. And I can replace that with this. And I'm going to hit replace all. Replace 30, 33 instances. Now I did not replace this dude. Replace next instance. Let's go up. Okay. Why I didn't replace that? Do it the hard way. So you want to save a menu? Okay. Well, that's right. Make sure it didn't miss any others. Okay, that was weird. All right. Let's save it. And we'll save this as. We'll call it C. 
menu dot Lua and for now we'll throw it in the fly with Lua folder scripts folder um, yeah we can do that um, otherwise uh, you could you would normally put it behind a launcher script right that would be just in the 172 uh, because I'm making 172 specific things but right now I've thrown it in the fly with Lewis scripts folder which means it would be available for everyone um, so I would I would uh, if you haven't watched my previous videos I would make a little launcher script that says if the ICAO code of the aircraft equals 172 um, or yeah C172 then uh, run you know this script in another directory which I would point it back to this Lua file which I would actually have in the laminar research Cessna 172 uh, folder right so basically that's just a launcher script that way it's not this this menu is only available when you're in the Cessna 172 for for this example so let's talk about what all this is right so the very first thing it does is it has this if not supporting float wi windows then log message IMG UI not supported by fly with Lua version right so if any of the users tried to run this script but they had an earlier version of fly with Lua that didn't actually have this IMG UI functionality built into it it would do Lua stopped right this is preventing that right so this basically will it, instead of stopping it'll still throw an error but it won't actually stop your your Lua your fly with Lua okay this is where you would uh, set your variables and your data refs and and commands or anything else that you want to call in your menu right you would set all that here so we're gonna set up some buttons so let's go ahead and do that um, I'm going to open my uh, my uh, other one that I had going on so I can get my cylinder head temperature data ref Where's it at? Laminar research. Where'd I put that? Oh, door in it. Yep. That's it. Okay. So I want this dude here. Right? Because we're putting the block heater on. Right? Remember? So there's that. Now. I've set my variables. I think that's the only one I'm going to want. Uh, no. Yes. No. Yeah. Because I want to call a command. <laughs> I want to call that command uh, that I made earlier. That uh, in Xlua I made the command for the block heater on, block heater off. You can call that uh, without actually defining it up here. So let's get to it. So in this in this function area, this is where your your GUI code goes. This is where you build all your stuff, all your buttons, all your menus, all your text, all the things that are going to go into that menu goes into this function, right? So that's where that goes this down here is uh, basically the show hide uh, toggle on off function of your menu if this wasn't here it would pretty much be okay but that menu would be up all the time and you wouldn't be able to close it basically if you're in the if you're in the aircraft it would it would come on and then you could you could hit the X you could hit the uh, you could hit this this red button and that would close it but then you wouldn't be able to call it up again unless you restarted the aircraft so we want to be able to toggle it on and off and be able to bind it to buttons uh, keyboard keyboard buttons or joystick buttons or whatever so we have to uh, do all that that's what's happening down here um, you wouldn't really change much in here just sort of leave it like it is um, if you wanna like dig into what this means uh, you're welcome to basically all this is is um, basically a hide and then a show uh, toggle right so this show underneath the show one though there is a few things you need to know this right here 500 by 500 that's the size of your menu okay 
in what are called voxels. Voxels are pixels, but they're scalable if you have a different resolution on your screen, um, etc. So this makes a 500 by 500 pixel voxel square, right? If I wanted it to be taller than I did wide, then I would change one of these to a higher number and blah, blah, blah. And all this is in the IMG UI demo uh, thing. You know, he calls it out. He calls it out wherever it is. I think it might be down here. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, he calls it out and he tells what all this is. Um, one, this means make it a menu like we're making. If you two, I think it makes it like a borderless, like transparent menu. Or it's like a borderless menu that you can click through. It doesn't actually stop your clicks. And then I don't think it's resizable. So just pretty much leave it at one. I think one is the best. And then true is something else I don't even remember. But I, I, that's why I pretty much leave all this alone. Uh, except for size. Sometimes I'll change the size. The other thing you can change is this is the name of the uh, what's happening inside the uh, thing up here, right? My program, IMG UI template 1.0. That's what that is. That's the, basically what's going on in the in the top of the menu. Now, it still says my program here because um, we're still viewing the template. This is still bound to the template, so we're going to change that in a little bit. Matter of fact, we have to restart X-Plane to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while we're talking about other things. Get that going. Okay, so um, let's see what else. And then this right here... Yeah, you would you would just leave this alone, right? So you'd leave all this alone, and basically your next thing to do down here is where um, you would actually, if you wanted to change the name of like the command or like open and close, if you wanted it to say something different in the menu where you go into macros, this is where you would actually change what those things say. And then down here, I I added uh, these these are um, color codes for uh, for changing the color. If you want to change the color of the text, you would grab your codes from here because you can't just type in the name black. You have to actually put this code here. And it's a weird hex code, man. These are, these are kind of hard to find. I think these are like Android, um, some sort of Android environment codes or something. I don't know. But they're hard to find. I found some of these on the internet. These are the most useful ones, um, the ones that are going to be used the most. So let's go ahead and make some buttons in our thing. First of all, let's uh, jump back in our 172. So in here, you can start doing basically, you know, your code. And the first thing we want to do in our code is make a button, right? So we can look here and we can see that, uh, look for things where he had a button. So remember, he had hello world and then he had other things and uh, basically had centered text and he had this thing called if IMGUI dot tree node buttons right then and then he had another thing that said button push me right so this I if this if IMGUI dot button that's how you make a button push me is what the button says on it right so we want to make a button and we want it to say something on it right so we'll copy that over so if IMGUI push me we don't want it to say push me we want it to actually say block heater on then we want to actually start a command right so we want to look and see what it is what what is the command to start a command, right? Do a find for command begin. There it is. Alright, so there's command begin, command once, and command end. Remember this is just like phase equals equals one or phase equals equals zero, the same thing. So command begin is uh what we want to do because if you remember we're wanting to hold that down right 
So command begin, and then you want to put the name of your command, right? What was the name of our command? Let's open that back up. That was in plugins, xlua, scripts, block heater, block heater. The name of our command is this, block heater on. Okay, so that's where that's where you put this. Block heater on, and then we want to close it, right? So then end. Right, that creates a button. Real simple. Okay, now let's make one for block heater off. Capital B. Block heater off. Then command begin what was it look at our thing it's this one my heater off and then end and then what we can do is we can print out some text. Basically when you print out some text you use uh, another thing, right? If I go to IMGUI I can look at where he put some text, right? It's text unformatted, right? So IMGUI text unformatted is how you just write some words in your menu, right? So we're gonna do that and we're actually instead of having it print out, well we'll do that. We'll, we'll have it print out some text and we'll say cylinder head temp and then we'll put like a colon and then we're actually going to put print out one more thing of text but it's going to be a value right so instead of printing out a string which would be what this is in quotes we're going to print out a value of what cht underscore temp is reading right so cht underscore temp the difference is, is you don't put it in quotes we're not print, we're not printing out a a string we're printing out a variable which is up here which is this data ref right so let's push play make sure we don't have any errors which we don't and uh, what I want to do is that actually whenever you check uh, for errors it also saves it so you notice how I can't save it because I just did right so uh, let's jump in here and we actually want to bind before we try this out we want to bind that toggle on and off right so we can come in here and here it is c172 menu menus open and close so we could actually clean that up we can take that extra menu out of there but if we want to open it let's let's bind that to three okay guys sorry about that i had some issues but i, th I think i figured it out so Basically what's happening here is uh, command begin, it starts this block heater on, but then it never stops. And, and what I have here is not enough to stop it because this is like if the button's being held down, right? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it back to this one and I'm going to say command end, right? That should get me going. So command begin and then command end will stop it from continuing. And that's all the functionality that I want. So I'm going to save that, come up here. This should make it work. So on makes it rise, off makes it stop. And it starts falling back down to the air temperature. So that's pretty cool. So uh, now let's say we wanted to rearrange these buttons, right? And rearrange some other things. So if I want to take this button move it up here to where it's next to it let's look at how we do that right let's see where he's got something next to something else same line here we go so I am GUI same line right will put this button 
on top of this one okay so there's actually one more thing you need so it puts it on the same line but there but the x value of both of these buttons starts all the way to the left so that's not going to work the way we want it so there's another thing that is uh set cursor position x let's look for that See, I know he's got it in this one. There it is. Set cursor position X200, right? So this 200 is how many pixels to the right you want to be. So if I said, let's make it 80, and you'll see what that does, right? So I'm going to reload. So it puts it, it's, it's over, but it's like not over enough. So we want to kind of play with these numbers until we get it where we want it. There we go, that's not too bad, right? So then let's go ahead and get rid of Hello World. And let's make just a space, right? Because the way I see it, um, I would like some some dead space in between these buttons right so that's where you would just take IMG UI text unformatted and give it close quotes like that open and close quotes and that's it that's that's how you create uh, some white space so we'll do that and then under here we'll put some white space and then here I'm gonna say We'll do same line and set cursor position to probably 200. What that's going to do is that's going to put this value here on the same line that says cylinder head temp and it's going to put it over here somewhere. So 150 would actually put it pretty perfect actually. So let's go 160 right let's save and look at what that did this is just rearranging and and adding there that's not bad so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and put it back under it and I want the buttons to kinda of be on top of each other right let's just make sure we like that there we go. That's pretty much what I like. Now, the next thing you can do is you can, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a sound. So when I turn the block heater on, I've got the actual functionality good. I just want that sound, right? So um, what you have to do is you have to find a sound, which I found I found uh, a bunch of sounds on Freesound. So it's freesound.org, right? And you can take these and you can use them however you want. And up here you can search, and I just search for like fan sounds because of this block heater is like a blower fan block heater, right? And I found one, and when you find them like this, so when you find the the wave file I'm looking for is one that's loopable. This one here, that's loopable because you see how the 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 sound at the end is pretty much the same as the beginning, right? And I found one that was pretty perfect that I thought was that was really good. So let's go in there. And uh, let me show you where I put it. So I put it in aircraft, laminar research, 172, heater sound. I made a folder called heater sound, and there's a heater sound.wav file. Okay, your uh, this only works for WAV files. So on Freesound, most of these are MP3s. So and the one that I downloaded was an MP3. So I had to go into Audacity and uh, export it as a WAV file. You can do that. In other things in Audacity, or not in Audacity, you can find other converters. Do it however you want. So, but we have to come up here where we set our variables, and we have to uh, make us make a sound, right? So we'll call it like heater sound equals, and then this is going to be very much like we did when we set our ICAO uh, launcher script. So instead of trying to 
recall all that from memory. I'm just going to pull up the one that I had, um, which was where I've got it here. Yep. So heater sound equals load wave file, and then you do the aircraft path with a thing. You can actually change that to directory separator, which we will in just a second here. So I'm going to copy that, paste it over. And remember from the last one, we don't actually want this slash. The slash will work great for Windows, but it doesn't work great for anything else, so it's not cross-platform. So I can type in the word directory underscore separator, and then uh, that should work, right? Now you'll notice I have some other things here. Let sound loop is a thing that you can set to true, which means the sound is going to loop, which is awesome. Set sound pitch is another thing you can do, and, and one is default, and I can change the pitch if I want it to sound lower or higher in pitch. You can change that to different lower or higher numbers and get it to sound different. So we'll go ahead and copy those over and paste those into our deal, because these are, these are variables that need to be uh, outside of the on build. This is the on build function. This is our runtime function, right? And then the deal is is play sound. So play sound will play it, right? Stop sound will stop it. So play sound. And you can find all this stuff in the Fly with Lua manual. So when we click the button, we want it to not only start the deal, but we want it to play the sound when we click off we want it to stop the deal and we want it to stop sound right let's try that out now, sounds can be a little funny in x-plane if you don't restart x-plane but let's just see if it works we'll reload all scripts Yeah. Yeah, it's not working. Okay. So the deal is, uh, I think I had directory separator in quotes. Separator. There we go. I think I had that in quotes and, and it shouldn't have been, and now it's not, and so let's try that. There we go. Now we're getting a nice sound. Working fine. Click off, turns it off. On, turns it on. Awesome. So uh, let's play with that just for a second. If I wanted to. change the pitch of that to like 0.5 oh, let's make it 0.25 let's go really low see what that sounds like you notice that I can do I can make changes like this really quick I can move things around and it's just a reload all it's just a it's as quick as this reload all Lewis scripts and then boom pop it back up and check it again see that's so low that it like just adds just a little bit of ambient fan noise. That's not bad either. Um, let's see what it sounds when I like when I go higher. It was at one. Let's go to uh, two. This should be twice as pitchy. Yeah, that's not bad either. Uh, okay, so that pretty much shows you how to get started doing this and shows you some of the cool little function functionality things you can do. With this menu, um, I wanted to show you uh, real quick. This is the demo. Uh, let's kind of go over these things. Um, these pull-down menus you can do. Uh, these choice buttons are pretty cool. Now with these choice buttons, like... Um, you got to remember that when you click on one, that's it. That's your choice on it. So, um, 
it's not a toggle. It's not an on-off. I can't turn this off by clicking on it again. It's one or the other or the other. Uh, the checkbox is kind of a toggle on and off. Um, you got sliders. You've got what's called a combo box. So I can change that to choice three. And then I can change this one to choice B, right? Those are combo boxes. Um, drag controls. I can drag this. So I can click and drag. It's pretty cool. Plots. I have no idea. <laughs> um, input, so I can you can have the users type things in and input something, right? And uh, you can input integers, so 45. I want to set it to you know 90. You can have people input things. Uh, drawing, you can use some basically vector graphics with x y coordinates and create circles and lines and triangles and stuff uh, images you could pop up some jpgs in there and then miscellaneous there's other other things you could do bullet style stuff and this is what different buttons look like complicated item so if i click and hold it gives you like a little explanation text all these things it's really cool man you can do all this and the best thing is it's vr compatible and scalable and movable and positionable all in vr and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed.